Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Support comes from the University of Alaska College Savings Plan, helping you and your child save for college every step of the way, from diapers to diploma. More information at uacollegesavings.com. The National Weather Service. Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for this Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy. On the uh, times again, uh, going through them, APB ARCS 530, and also uh, KUAC 9.4 uh, all week has been shown at, not, at 530, and uh, 360 North, you can catch it at 730, and Alaska Public Media, 5 a.m. the following morning. And uh, of course, it always gets posted on YouTube by about 6 p.m. And moving on to the uh, morning chart here, winter storm warning out for the snow here for the Brooks Range area, uh, mainly on the east side, but uh, actually it's extended back to the west a little bit there. And uh, four to eight inches has fallen. This uh, warning out for another couple hours or so, uh, set to expire early this evening early Friday evening, so you may pick up uh, another inch or so here until that uh, expires. Otherwise, yesterday's satellite uh, showed a pretty active front uh, pushing in to the southeast coast there. That brought the storm force winds and gales early in the day, uh, along with a fairly sh good shot of rain there. And that Before that brought that heavy rain into uh, the North Gulf Coast, which uh, became a little more showery system here over Cook Inlet, made for a wet start to the day yesterday and a lot of uh, cold cue here streaming southeastward across Bristol Bay and toward the Alaska Peninsula with the uh, one low center trying to lift northward here actually uh, starting out over Cook Inlet the upper center aloft and that pulling northward into the afternoon another system out here pulling westward and we'll take a look at today you can see that front uh, edging its way eastward and weakening there, but moving east and then that followed by the showery conditions there across uh, the Pandandle today. Uh, nothing too terribly heavy, uh, just more showery. Same thing over the North Gulf Coast. Uh, thunderstorms again, uh, very persistent uh, yesterday afternoon throughout the night and into today there for Prince William Sound with the uh, cold air aloft here that came into the Gulf of Alaska there and then some more back through here more showers not thunderstorms there for bristol bay uh, some clearing occurring this afternoon across northern cook inlet uh, lots of clouds and all that moisture streaming north brought the uh, significant snowfall to the uh, brooks range area especially above about 2,000 feet uh, kind of a mixture of precipitation back up along the north uh, coast there and the arctic uh, the north or the Arctic coast on the east side back to about Barrow where it was mostly rain there, uh, Kaktovik over to uh, Dead Horse and then changing over to snow toward Barrow and some shower conditions there here back over the Seward Peninsula. Light showers scattered around the area there. The colder air is still back up here to the northwest. It's going to be dropping in uh, overnight tonight and again this uh, pink shaded area that's uh, you had rain or snow depending on your elevation, your location, and the time of day up there. As the colder air begins to come in from the northwest, uh, changing over to snow as the snow levels drop. But here, the eastern area is falling as rain there. Uh, cold foot picking up about a half inch, water equivalent of uh, precipitation there. While New Exit uh, on the eastern Arctic coast, they picked about a quarter of an inch of rain. So uh, again, higher elevations, four to eight inches of snow having fallen with that, that moisture coming northward there overnight last night and throughout the day today. Down to the south, a little bit of a break right through here. A line of showers along the western Alaska range extended down to the uh, northeast Bristol Bay area where some pretty moderate showers swung into there uh, during the day today with uh, Igigik picking up about half an inch of rain in the 12-hour period uh, 
during the day today and then more scattered showers along that trough there from the central Alaska Peninsula on out toward the eastern Aleutians and again a weak trough right through here uh, dropping southward just some scattered showers with that and a lot of clouds out over the Bering Sea not much clearing except what occurred here over south central Alaska it looks like maybe some eastern uh, over toward the border here may have seen a little bit of sunshine and possibly uh, a few breaks over the panhandle but uh, still a pretty showery day there. Uh, rainfall amounts uh, ranging uh, again Cordova picked up about a quarter of an inch of rain to a half inch at Valdez a thunderstorm activity in across this area today and also Yakutat picking about half an inch of rain during the day today otherwise uh, down the panhandle Sitka received a third of an inch and uh, for tonight uh, those showers will continue just look for mostly cloudy scattered showers a little more numerous here along the north gulf coast areas uh, weak low there over Kamishak bay and that's going to keep a chance of showers as that trough swings across kodiak island uh, during the night tonight scattered showers southern alaska kind of a break right through here mixture of rain or snow showers up to the north of course the higher elevations that'll be in the form of snow but the uh, warning ending there and so uh, whatever does fall will be quite light and uh, some skips of snow grazing the eastern Arctic coast over that very weak trough uh, heading eastward there around the low up in the Arctic and then the colder air spreading some snow shower conditions in along the western Arctic coast uh, becoming mixed staying rain here from the uh, Seward Peninsula southward to Nunavak Island. Uh, showers mostly along the Yukon Delta coast, drying out though over Bristol Bay. And also up here, the wind's starting to drop off uh, a little bit tonight. Uh, gusts over 40 miles an hour in some locations up there on the east side, Point Thompson airstrip, uh, for example, had the stronger gusts, otherwise mostly in the uh, 15 to 25 mile per hour range with small craft advisories out there uh, for tonight and the Aleutians are at the Eastern Bering Sea some scattered showers drying out back out to the west and then the next system there coming across the uh, Russian Far East pushes into the Western Bering tomorrow over the Northwest Bering too far to the north to affect the Aleutians look for some light breezes there at some partial clearing and uh, still looking at the scattered showers isolated to scattered showers there for the Eastern Aleutians right up toward the southwest coast, Cape Newenham, maybe along the Yukon Delta coast, this trough uh, kind of sagging southward there. So that's going to keep it mostly cloudy. Scattered showers over the Yukon Cusquam Delta area is becoming mixed farther to the north. And in the colder air, that'll be mostly snow showers there. Most, uh, here the western Arctic coast down possibly the north side of the Seward Peninsula, but nothing heavy at all. Not a lot of moisture there to work with and looks like a partly to mostly sunny day from the Copper River Basin all the way up across uh, the Tanaw Valley, Upper Yukon Flats area, even the Koyukuk Valley drying out uh, maybe uh, some sunshine as well as the North Slope and different story down here along the Panhandle. Uh, another surge of moisture coming northward spreads uh, some fair amounts of rain in across the central and southern southeast coast uh, during the day tomorrow with uh, more convective nature to this trough here It'll be a little more uh, showery. Some of those could be moderate around the uh, Yakutat area and also look for an increase in the showers, both the intensity and the uh, concentration here for the North Gulf Coast uh, tomorrow. But uh, South Central Alaska, Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, partial clearing, risk of showers, mostly back along the Alaska Range. And uh, pretty good day there for Kodiak Island with the uh, flow becoming more west and northwest. Uh, probably see some sun breaks there, especially in the afternoon hours. And then uh, higher pressure right through here, north central Bering Sea. That's going to shift eastward and make for a pretty nice Sunday here from Bristol Bay northward across the uh, western half of the state right up to the north slope there. Got a weak trough continuing along the western Arctic coast for some uh, mixed precipitation possibilities. But again, nothing heavy at all. And then this system driving eastward there. Rainfall uh, should make landfall on the coast there as early as uh, late Saturday night, actually probably very early Sunday morning or at the latest by uh, noontime Sunday. Otherwise high pressure in advance. Again, Bristol Bay, uh, partly cloudy, some sunshine for the Alaska Peninsula and rain spreading into the Pribilofs right up to St. Lawrence Island. Low pressure, Western Prince William Sound. That keeps a uh, chance of showers here, Cook Inlet, 
really over all of the southeast interior, mostly cloudy with uh, scattered to isolated showers across the entire area and then northward there toward Eagle, but not too bad for the Koyukuk Valley areas or even the Tanana Valley. And uh, some isolated showers may end altogether and could be partly sunny here over the northern central southeast coast with light winds on Sunday. But uh, this system here looks like most of the moisture will spread northeastward. The other one that brings the rain in tomorrow and tomorrow night that uh, shifts off to the east, weakens in Canada. Another one comes up and replaces it here. But uh, kind of hard to say. I think uh, definitely you'll see some rain move into the southern panhandle on Sunday. Uh, kind of iffy how far north that gets. Temperatures down that way today were mostly in the mid 50s with 54 at Cloac. Otherwise, 52. Juneau, 54 in Sitka, 50 degrees in Yakutat, just 47 at Cordova, and they had uh, a lot of thunderstorm activity over the last 24 hours there. Valdez, 45, lower to mid 50s here at Cook Inlet, but uh, Homer up to 58, lower 50s in the valley. Lower 50s here at Copper River Basin, uh, McCarthy at 52, Gunside, 47, 55 at Northway, 10 degrees cooler at Fairbanks and Tanana, mid 40s there. And uh, up to the north, uh, elevation 28 degrees in Anatovic this afternoon, just above freezing there for the north slope while Arctic Village was at 37. Mid to upper 30s for the Arctic coast, lower 40s over the northwest interior, as well as the uh, Seward Peninsula with 40s on down across the uh, Yukon Custom Delta, 44 in McGrath, 46 Bethel, for example, and 43 at uh, Unalakleet. Out west, uh, St. Paul up to 50 with a 47 at St. George. Lower 50s here over the western and central Aleutians. On Alaska, 50 degrees this afternoon, falls past 48. And lower to mid 50s here right up uh, into northeast Bristol Bay. For the lows tonight, 40s. For the southeast coast, uh, 30s and 40s here, southern Alaska into Bristol Bay. Back into mainly the mid 40s for the Alaska Peninsula and the Aleutians. Uh, north. 20s for the Brooks Range, otherwise 30s. For the highs tomorrow, 30s here from the Brooks Range on out to the coast with uh, 40s, lower 50s, northeast interior, all the way back down in toward Bristol Bay, lower to mid 50s for the Panhandle. Flying weather tomorrow, I got some IFR right through here over the west central interior, just from the Nolato Hills eastward a little bit, and then a more extensive area from the northern Koyukuk Valley on up to the eastern Arctic coast there. This for about uh, 4 a.m. tomorrow morning, marginal VFR right along the Alaska Range and back into the Kuskokwim Valley and then up the coast here across the Seward Peninsula, persisting along the North Gulf Coast, but uh, improving there for the Panhandle. Tomorrow afternoon, uh, things still look pretty marginal for the Western Alaska Range right up into the central interior areas, as well as uh, turning an arm eastward along the North Gulf Coast and conditions deteriorating for the southeast coast again that moisture pushing northward there with the next system spreading IFR in from Dixon entrance across uh, Prince of Wales Island and even the southern areas here. Good VFR Kodiak Island back across the southern Bering Sea and then uh, looks like some IFR farther out to the west. Passes, Anatovic, uh, good VFR tomorrow. Big improvement from today there with Adigan. Same forecast, VFR. Lake Clark and Merrill, occasionally marginal. Same forecast for rainy. And uh, windy, starting out marginal, then becoming VFR probably by mid or late morning. Isabel, VFR. Mentasta, VFR as well. Uh, any shower activity for those two passes or clouds will be the VFR variety. And for Tanita, VFR expected. Portage uh, marginal throughout the entire day. Chilkoot and White, uh, same forecast, marginal VFR. Freezing levels uh, about 4 a.m., 2,000 feet right through here, southern Seward Peninsula at the surface back to the north. 4,000 feet now all the way down across southern Alaska southward, uh, just passing the eastern Aleutians there with uh, 6,000 feet there across uh, the southern panhandle. Icing uh, tomorrow looking like this with the shower activity here. Areas, scattered areas of mixed icing, mostly above 4,000 feet here to the west. And then uh, looks like some icing, rime icing, coming up across the panhandle there above about 8,000 feet. And then extending back to the west, a little more mixed here from the north Gulf Coast in toward Prince William Sound. And the jet stream for tomorrow, a trough uh, from the low center there, just north of Wrangell Island, extending down into the west central interior areas. 
And then uh, low pressure here, well south of the Alaska Peninsula, southerly uh, southwest jet, pretty strong here, 160 knots, uh, higher pressure building off the west coast of North America. So the jet coming back northward, and that's going to carry that uh, moisture right on up with it. And for 9,000 feet, uh, trough right through here, southwest flow, not too strong, 10 to 15, up to 20 knots there off the south coast of the pan, and maybe even 30 knots coming across Stewart. Out west, uh, west-southwest, 15 to 25 knots there, turning northwest across the Alaska Peninsula on up uh, toward uh, Norton Sound. 3,000 foot winds, northwest, 10 to 20 here, eastern Bering Sea, Alaska Peninsula, westerlies at about 15 to 20 or so over the southern Bering Sea and the Aleutians. Pretty light variable winds, southern Alaska, even up to the north there, and uh, these stronger winds here near the Queen Charlotte. Those won't be advancing northward, those will be uh, probably just dissipating, so that stronger wind max won't be making it into the southern southeast coast. But uh, look for some occasional light to isolated moderate chop here for Prince of Wales Island. And then maybe right along the coast below about 4,000 feet. Otherwise, a uh, pretty good day turbulence-wise across all of the state. And after hangar flying, I'll be back with a look at the rain forecasts. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mary O'Connor with the Aviation Safety Program at the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health here in Anchorage and with the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation. Thank you for watching Hangar Flying. This evening, we are honored to have on our show Mr. Mike Hodges, who is an aviation accident investigator with the National Transportation Safety Board. Mike, welcome to the show. Thanks, Mary. You are relatively new to Alaska. You've been here since April, but you're not really new to the board. Can you tell us where you started and why you decided to come to Alaska? Uh, sure. I started off with the uh, NTSB back in February 2015, uh, based in the Seattle office. And like I said, I transferred up here to the uh, Anchorage office back in April. And uh, this is my second time being in Alaska. I used to live and work up in Fairbanks a couple of years ago. So I've been here about a little bit about a year and a half now. Okay. So it's not uh, terribly new to you then? No, no. Okay. How did you get started in aviation? When I graduated college, I was really interested in flying helicopters, and uh, I looked at the Army as an avenue for doing that. So I went to the Army and uh, went to flight school for about two years, and then did that and flew for about six years operationally across the, uh, the country and overseas also, and that's kind of how I got my start in aviation. And did you have a degree in aviation, or was it aviation related at all? No, no, it's actually, uh, my, my undergrad is actually history. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, I know, <laughs> and then a couple years ago I went back to school and got my master's in aviation safety, but uh, undergraduate's just uh, non-aviation related. Okay. Uh, so uh, you entered the military mm -hmm. and you went to pilot training there? Correct. What yeah. types of aircraft did you get to fly? Uh, when I did my initial training, I did it in a TH-67. That's basically a Bell 206 helicopter. And then uh, after that, I uh, progressed onto an OH-58D. That's basically a Bell 407 helicopter, and I flew that for about six years. And do you have a fixed wing experience? I have a couple hours here and there when I was in high school, but not, not a whole lot of fixed wing time. Okay, okay. And did you have a, a favorite aircraft that you flew? Uh, just those two helicopters in the military. Those are my two ones I enjoyed being the most. Did you have any uh, missions that you particularly enjoyed? Yeah, uh, the uh, OH-58D, it, it's a, uh, a uh, reconnaissance and a uh, light attack helicopter, and so going out and doing those missions overseas is really enjoyable and rewarding on a personal level. And where did you go overseas? I spent a year in Iraq and a year in Afghanistan. Wow. Well, thank you for your service. Thank you. You've been involved uh, in safety aspects of aviation for some time. Um, you were an aviation life support equipment officer in the Army? What was that like? As basically an individual who's responsible for the, the maintenance and inspection and upkeep of um, aviators, uh, life support gear such as helmets, uh, flight vests, uh, things of that nature, survival kits, first aid kits for the helicopter. And uh, I was one of the individuals in the unit that was responsible for doing inspections and upkeep and maintenance on uh, those type of items. And then 
After that, I progressed on to becoming an aviation safety officer where I started, got my start into accident investigation and oh. doing safety program management. Okay. So um, after the Army, you worked in private industry, correct? Correct. And what did you do there? I worked for Sikorsky Helicopters in uh, Coatesville, Pennsylvania. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that operation or not, but it's a large uh, global helicopter facility. It's uh, a Part 21 production facility and Part 145 repair station. And they, they build three different models of helicopters there, the S-7060, the S-92A, and the S-300C. And I was in charge of the foreign object debris program there for the repair station and production facility. And really enjoyable place to work, really great people. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's really nice seeing that finished helicopter roll off on the line and knowing you had a, a part to play in that. Did you get to fly those aircraft as well? No, no, I was just uh, flying desks there and doing paperwork, <laughs> so. <laughs> um, but um, it sounds like both of those opportunities really gave you some safety experience from both sides, um, from a flight um, aspect as well as a uh, more of a maintenance side. You got to see some some real key safety issues. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I, I don't particularly come from a maintenance background. I don't have an AMP license, but working in that environment of a repair station and production facility really gives you that firsthand experience of working with mechanics and you know the fabrication folks and the avionics folks and uh, seeing what they do on a daily basis and being around them. Um, that is a great segue to one of our programs where we're going to have you back to talk about a safety alert that uh, concerns foreign object debris. Um, so that's a great segue. Thank you. We really appreciate you being here. Thank you for chatting with us, Mike. Thanks for having me. Um, it's been a pleasure having you, and we look forward to having you back. This program is sponsored by the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation and Alaska Public Media. We appreciate your support, and we appreciate you watching Hangar Flying. Ladies and gentlemen, until next time, fly safely. Today's uh, ice analysis, uh, not much change. Uh, still have some heavier stuff in the 7 to uh, 9 tenths uh, variety here off the coast, but uh, kind of hugging in close to the coast here, Barrow on down toward there. And not a lot of change here over the weekend. Monday, if some uh, stronger southerly winds come in, and then that may be followed by westerlies uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, that may possibly lift this off the coast and then maybe start to carry it eastward. That's uh, just a possibility at this point in time. Otherwise, not looking for a whole lot of change in this uh, current condition. And for the southeast coast, small craft advisories for southerlies 25 to 30 knots on the south coast, 10 to 12 foot seas, southeast 25 on the north coast. Southeast coming up, increasing, especially tomorrow afternoon, to 30 knots for Clarence Strait, uh, 20 knots Stevens Passage, south 20 for Northern Lynn Canal. Then on Sunday, those really drop off there uh, just south of 10, southeast 15 for the uh, central and southern inner channels. Pretty light winds now for Sunday here out along the coast, just 10 to 15 knots from the south with uh, six to eight foot seas. For Prince William Sound, easterly winds at 20 knots in the forecast, it's three feet. Light variable winds for all of Cook Inlet back down into Kamishak Bay, the Barrens, south to southwest, 10 to 15, five to six foot seas for the North Gulf Coast, 15 knot winds for Kodiak Island. And then for uh, Sunday, westerlies of 15 there for the island, Shelikoff Strait, uh, northwest now 15 to 20 knots, Barren Islands, a little bit stronger here for Kamishak Bay. And uh, winds stay light and on, for the most part, variable for Cook Inlet, east 15 for Prince William Sound, and 15 knot winds for the North Gulf Coast. With uh, Bristol Bay having westerlies at 20 knots uh, tomorrow, that uh, same wind pattern also exists from Sitkanak to Castle Cape. Northwest 20 knots here for the uh, winds for the Alaska Peninsula with six foot seas. And for Sunday, those turn westerly at the same speed there. Now northwest winds Bristol Bay and they're southwest of Kodiak Island running about 20 knots. And for the Aleutians, Fox Islands, uh, no big winds at all out there for the weekend. West northwest 15 to 20 tomorrow. Westerly's at about 26 to 7 foot seas here for the central Aleutians, becoming southwest onto the west. 
And then we've got small craft advisories coming in, uh, 25 knots southwest, sea seven feet here. Central Aleutians becoming more westerly, west of Kiska. And southwest winds, uh, 20 to 25 knots, or west southwest, 20 to 25 there for the eastern Aleutians areas. Southwest coast, northwest, 15 to 20 knots. Otherwise, west northwest, 15 for the remainder of the area. And Sunday, uh, pick the winds up, small craft advisories now for the southwest coast out of the south, northern Bering Sea, 30 knot winds there for the Pribilofs with 12 foot seas. Eastern Arctic coast, east at 15 tomorrow, southwest 15 on the central and western coast, going back around to the west from Cape Beaufort on down toward Wales. And then uh, southwest or south to southwest here from the central coast, maybe up to 20 knots from Cape Thompson to Wales. And the eastern Arctic coast, a little lighter, more variable, west-southwest, 10 to 15. And for tonight, uh, showers here for the Panhandle and uh, showers from the North Gulf Coast. Scattered showers south-central Alaska up to about the uh, Alaska Range. Maybe some scattered snow showers. The warning ending here very shortly for the uh, Brooks Range there. Light snow possible eastern Arctic coast. More showers along the southwest coast to a lesser extent for the Alaska Peninsula. And then uh, a lot of moisture comes north uh, late tonight and tomorrow, spreading an increase in precipitation, mostly uh, showers here, Yakutat and the Prince William Sound, more of a uh, solid steady rain there across the southern panhandle, otherwise out here to the west with this trough, uh, showers in the form of snow to the north, rain to the south, but nothing heavy at all. Showers now mainly along the Alaska range, so could see some sunshine here over south central Alaska, definitely Copper River Basin northward. And then for Sunday, uh, this system keeps a good chance of rain over the southern southeast coast, but uh, you may lose the showers altogether there up to the north and a very nice day coming up for the west central interior. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Alaska Pipeline Service Company, fueling philanthropic programs and dedicated to creating educational and professional opportunities for Alaska Native people. The National Weather Service.